So I just want to open the floor and just ask you guys, when I say authenticity, authentic, like, what, is it, what does it mean to you guys? What picture pops up into your head when you think of authentic or authenticity? John? Being real. Being real. Yes, absolutely. What else? When you think of authenticity, when you think of authentic, what comes to mind? What do you got? Original. Original? Yeah, that's a good one. What else? Anybody got one? Alexis, what you got? Yes. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Okay. So when I think of the word authentic, there are two things that come to mind. Okay. Uh, first is embarrassing. So I'm just going to embarrass myself. Okay. First thing is this. I'm a huge Pokemon card fan. All right. Anyone else? Pokemon cards. You like TCGs. You like those kinds of things. Okay. Great. I'm not the only one. Guys, I'm a nerd. It's okay. And it's okay to be a nerd. I love Pokemon cards. Okay. Uh, I buy and sell a lot of them. Okay. When you buy and sell them, you have to make sure that you have what? An authentic card, right? So let's say you buy, let's say, what, what happened? They said money. Yeah. They said money, yes, okay. You have to make sure it's authentic, right? So, so you have to make sure you have a real card. You have to make sure you have a real $100 bill, okay? The second thing I think of is food, all right? So Alexis nailed it, right? You're driving down the street, you walk past an Italian or a Mexican restaurant, and it says 100% authentic Mexican, right? Okay. If you want authentic Mexican food, you go to Mexico, right? You go to Mexico. You don't go to Qdoba, okay? I hate to break it to you guys. Qdoba is not authentic Mexican food. It is not. What do you got? Chipotle. Chipotle is also not authentic Mexican food. Chipotle is American Mexican food, but it's delicious, okay? So, okay. So, so here's the deal, all right? So authenticity, it's, it's this thing that means a little, it, it means different things to different people, okay? But for us, in our walk of life, um, when you guys talk about authenticity, when you guys talk about what it looks like to be an authentic person, okay, here, here's my thought. Chances are, okay, a lot of you guys, sixth grade all the way up to your senior year in high school, okay, being an authentic version of yourself sometimes can be a, move, a moving target, right? Because listen, from year to year, everything, like a lot of things change. So if I ask you guys a question, are you the same person that you were when, so high schoolers, if I ask you this question, are you the same person that you were when you were in sixth grade? No. 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 Sixth grade, middle schoolers, are you guys the same person that you were in second and third grade? Yeah. Maybe, okay, but... Being an authentic version of yourself when you're this young, when you're in this stage of life, it's a moving target, okay? So rather than talk about that, what I want to talk about tonight is what does it look like to actually walk as an authentic Christian, okay? What does it look like to walk under it as an authentic Christian? Because here's the truth, okay? You've got yourself, right? Who you are, what you like, uh, you know, what you think about things, how you feel about things, that kind of lives under this umbrella of what it looks like to be an authentic Christian. So coming off the heels of this transformation series where we've talked about, okay, transformation is this thing where we allow Jesus to come into our hearts. We allow Jesus to enact in our hearts, to change our hearts, to transform us from one thing to another, okay? Now we're taking that next step and we're saying, okay, now that that has happened, now what, Right? Now that this experience with Jesus that has caused us to be a different person than we were when we started, now we're going to move into, okay, what does it actually look like to walk as an authentic Christian, okay? And so I think Paul is going to think, hey, this is a natural step, okay? Because in our transformation series, we lived in Romans 12, 1, right? Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Like, you remember that? Say, okay, so we lived in that scripture for a while, all right? And so now... Nine, nine verses later, seven verses later, all right, Paul transitions and he talks about uh, what it looks like to be a true Christian, okay? So if you guys want to follow along, Romans 12, verses 9 through 13, okay? Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. Here's what it says, okay? This is kind of a, I like to think of things in a bulleted list. In fact, everything that I speak of is a bulleted list. So if you think through all of these things, just think through all of the different traits that he's talking about. Here's what he says. He says, love must be sincere. We must hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, 
Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be faithful in prayer. And share with the Lord's people who are in, who are in need and practice hospitality. So for Paul, this is a list of traits, right? This is a list of things that is kind of a litmus test for, okay, what does it look like to be an authentic Christian? You are a Christian, therefore these things should be evident or present in your life. And so uh, for me, the only way that I could effectively think about how to communicate this to you is just to tell you a couple stories about people that are in my life, all right? But all under the umbrella of this, okay, that authentic Christians live out authentic love, all right? Authentic Christians live out authentic love. And so here's the deal, guys. I know when we say love, it can be like this word that we've, we throw around and it's got like this fuzzy meaning to it. But what I want to talk about and what I really want us to get to the heart of is what does it look like to interact with each other? What does it look like to interact with the brothers and sisters of Christ and to show each other the respect, the love that we all deserve but more importantly, what does it look like to come together as a community of faith and actually support each other, right? Root for each other, cheer for each other, come alongside each other, fill each other like when we have needs, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about. And so the first thing that I wanted to uh, just kind of drive home for you guys is that, hey, uh, authentic love is sincere. Authentic love is sincere, all right, and so when I think about authentic love and when I think about this word sincere, there's only one person that comes to mind for me, okay? And it's this guy named Dean Zimmerman, okay? Dean Zimmerman is one of the most important men in my life, all right? And he's someone that, like, if I didn't know this man, my life would be radically different. And so Dean is my father-in-law, all right? So he's my father-in-law, and he is a second father to me, okay? So... Dean, Dean has taught me countless lessons, right? So many different lessons in my life. Lessons on how to approach, like, when, all, when I've got all this chaos going in my life, he's able to say, okay, here's how you approach this with wisdom. He taught me how to uh, be a good worker in the corporate world, all right? There was a time in my life where all I had ever done was ministry, and I had never worked for a company before, and it was hard, and I needed help, and he taught me how to do that. Uh, he taught me how to fly fish, uh, and most importantly, he taught me what his daughter's favorite snacks are when she's sad, okay? Guys, figure it out, okay? It will serve you well in life, okay? But here's one thing that he's been able to teach me without ever having to sit me down into a classroom, okay? It's how to lead your life with sincere love, how to lead your life with sincere love, so I, just have, I have just a couple more pictures of him. Here's him and I fly fishing. Now, what you don't know about this picture is this fish is actually about to shoot out of his hand <laughs> trying to get back to life or trying to get back to the water. Um, so, <laughs> here's a, so Dean is the kind of guy, he catches six fish and I catch none. And I say, Dean, that's amazing, dude. You caught six fish. He's like, yeah, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal, right? And it's like, dude, it is kind of a big deal. So that's Dean, and then this is, this is one of the other pictures of him and I uh, when the Az won the Stanley Cup. That was pretty cool. Um, so, hey, this guy, this guy took me in, and this guy showed me love that I've never felt before, okay? Uh, one story. I'll never forget this, okay? I'm sitting in a coffee shop in Austin, Texas, all right? Um, and I'm sitting at a coffee shop. It's just him and I, and I've never been more nervous in my life to talk with him. And I'm sitting down with him, and I'm finally asking him permission to ask his daughter to marry him, or to marry me, okay? So I'm sitting with him, and I'm asking him, I'm like, hey, like, I know that this has been a long road, it's been a long journey, but like, I, I really think that I want to marry your daughter, would you give, your, give me permission? Uh, this guy looks me in the eyes, and he knows my faults, he knows my flaws, he knows the things that I'm good at. He knows the things that I'm bad at. And he knows that I had just broken up with his daughter like two years before, right? And now we worked all the way back and all that's in our past. And I'm like, dude, I messed up, right? And he looks me in the eye and without hesitation, he says, yes, you can marry my daughter. And this is a situation where I knew I loved her. He knew that I loved him and I knew that he loved me too. 
But ultimately, when he says yes, not only did I gain a father-in-law, but I gained a best friend. And so Dean is the kind of guy that when you call him up at 11 p.m. at night, when you flooded your brand new house because you didn't know how to connect your washing machine, you call him up and you're like, Dean, there's water falling from the ceiling. It's, it's horrible. It's the first night we're in this house. He says, great. He gets in the car. He shows up with a shop vac, towels, without asking questions. He doesn't say, you know, he doesn't say just, I'll be there in the morning. He comes without, without asking questions at all. And Dean is the kind of guy that uh, you go out on the water with him, you start fly fishing, and you've got to ask him for the thousandth time, how do I tie this specific knot that you've shown me how to do a thousand times? He doesn't get frustrated. He doesn't get annoyed. He just says, Here, here's how to do it, and he treats me like it's the first time he's ever taught me. And most importantly, Dean is the kind of guy that when he gives you a hug, when he tells you he loves you, it is sincere. You know that that man has a special place in your heart just for him. And so Paul says, this love ought to be the way that we treat each other. Now, it might not always be the same, right? But Paul says that we ought to love each other in the same way, that our love ought to be sincere, that when we look somebody in the eye and we say, I love you, that this is not a hollow statement. That this isn't a statement where it's like, yeah, man, I love you, but like, man, just please do not uh, inconvenience me. Or I love you up to a point, right? He's saying we ought to love each other with sincerity, meaning when we say it, we mean it. And so Dean's love for not only me, but his daughter, his grandchildren, and for Christ is so genuine and it is so easy to see. And so for us, we got to ask the question, hey, can the same be said about us? Can the same be said about us? When we walk through the hallways of our, of our high school, like, do people feel a sincere love? I hope so. I would imagine so. I know most of you. I think that that is true. Romans 12.10, it also says to be devoted to one another in love. Be devoted to one another in love. Authentic love, hey, it's being devoted to one another, okay? Being devoted to one another. Now, hey, this is kind of a tough one, all right? I've been in high school before. I know what it's like to have a friend group one year and not have a friend group the next year, okay? It changes. Things change. You change. People change. But for me in my life, when I look at this and I think about it, all I can think about, and this is a cop-out, all right? I know. But all I can think about is my wife, all right? My wife and us, like, my wife and I have this relationship where I just know that that woman is devoted to us. Not just me, but to her kids, right? Not just her kids, but also Jesus, right? Her love is so devoted for them. And honestly, like that woman is the one woman in my life, the one person in my life that no matter what I do, she is cheering right behind me. Throughout our married life, guys, we have gone through so much, okay? This is us as young bucks, all right? This is like 10 years ago, all right? 10 years and like 40 pounds ago, okay? (laughs) So like, listen, we've been through a lot, all right? We've been through a lot. We've been through Really, really good t- seasons. We've been through really, really bad seasons. We've been through two sons. We've been through moving across the country and moving back across the country. Um, guys, when I walked away from Rocky like 10 years ago, it was one of the hardest things that I ever had to do. Okay, so some of you guys don't know, this is the second time I've been to Rocky, right? And this place is a special place in my heart. And it was the hardest thing for me to leave this church. When we moved from Uh, to Austin, Texas for my new job, she was right there. She was my biggest fan. Uh, In my darkest seasons, like seasons of depression, seasons of anxiety, seasons of just not, not being able to get out of bed in the morning, man, she's right there just saying she loves me, she's here for me. And when we moved from North Carolina to Colorado a few months ago, she's right there. And she's my best friend, right? And I have pictures like this where just they break my heart. But There is no one who is more devoted to me, to a knucklehead like me, than her. All right? And so Paul kind of says, Paul kind of says that, hey, there is this sense. There is this, there is this ask, right? There is this ask that Jesus has put on us as Christians that this is not the same as what the world would tell us to do. The world tells you, man, if it's hard, get out. 
If it's hard, get out. If it's uncomfortable, get out. Like, you don't, have, you don't have to maintain that friendship. You don't have to maintain that relationship. Now, we're talking like, hey, if you got toxic relationships, like, walk away. But we're talking about, like, when things get hard, when things get inconvenienced, like, the world is saying, hey, man, just walk away. You don't need it. And there are countless moments where this, <laughs> this lady could have been like, yo, you're spending too much money on Pokemon cards. I'm out, right? Or you're too loud when you watch sports. I'm out. Or, you know, you snore too much. I'm out, Okay. So many times that woman could have just been like, I'm done, deuces, it's too hard, bye. But Paul says that this kind of devotion is something to strive for as Christians. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is why? Why is it so important to be devoted to each other? And here's why, okay? Here's what I think. Y'all, it's hard to find relationships and it is hard to find friendships where you guys are devoted to each other, isn't it? Like where you know that this person, no matter what, is in my corner and no matter what, this person is going to fight with me and for me. And so I think that we've got to find people who are devoted to each other, okay, because we share a common bond in Jesus, right? So this community, this room right here, these people, brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, be devoted to each other, all right? Get to know each other. You see people in this room that you've never seen before? Strike up a conversation. Y'all, we're not that big. Let's get to know each other and let's figure it out. Because here's the cool thing. Niwa people, Silver Creek people, Longmont people, whoever you are, okay? Apex people, Altona people, Flagstaff. Y'all, when you walk through the hallways of your school and you see each other, whether or not you are close, whether or not you're great friends, you get to walk through the hallways and you get to say, I know that person's on my team. At the end of the day, I know that person's on my team. I saw them at church. I know they're on my team. And so, hey, listen, life is hard. Life is hard, okay? If you guys haven't figured that out, uh, life is really hard. Some of you guys are sitting here tonight and you're like, Mike, you don't even understand how hard life is. And you're probably right. Y'all have been through some stuff, okay? And let me tell you something. When you guys have people, friendships, relationships, and you guys are devoted to each other, you guys are locking, or you guys are locked in step in friendship with each other, like, it makes things a little bit easier, doesn't it? Right? So the last thing, okay? And then I'll shut up. Okay? Authentic love, here's what it does. All right? Authentic love puts others above yourself. All right? Authentic love puts others above yourself. Hey, uh, my mom is the strongest person that I know. Uh, my mom is the most selfless person that I know. Uh, my mom has been through countless health issues. Uh, there are days where she cannot move. She can't get out of bed. There are days where she cannot eat. Uh, there are days where she just, she just can't even function. But that woman, every single day, when you ask her to do something, her first response is, yes, how can I help? Regardless of how she's feeling, regardless of what she's gone through, she is willing to lay down her desires, her pain, her struggles, to try and make sure that you are okay. Uh, in the season of life that my wife and I are in right now, uh, some of you guys have seen my three-year-old run around here. Okay? The dude is a ball of energy, and he's no different when we get home. Okay? So we are all over the place. Okay? I'm following him around. We got a newborn that's screaming at the top of his lungs. And so here's the story. Okay? My mom and my dad come out to North Carolina when Riley was born. Okay, Riley was the, the little baby in that other picture. All right, big blue eyes. I don't know how he got blue eyes. He doesn't look anything like me. Um, that's, a, that's a mystery for another day. Okay, um, but, but here we are. We're trying to take care of every, everything. And so we're at this house, and I got to, I've got my newborn, and my mom and my dad are home. And my mom is having a rough, rough, rough day, like rough health day. Okay, she's on the couch. She can barely move. She's struggling. We're just making sure that she's comfortable. Okay, something's going on with Riley upstairs. I don't know. He pooped his pants or something, and my wife is freaking out. My my dad's up there trying to help, making things worse. And so I have to run upstairs. Okay, where's the three-year-old? No clue. No clue where the three-year-old is. Sometimes that happens. Okay, and here's what I come downstairs to after uh, after we figure everything out. All right. So I come downstairs. My mom is struggling, guys. She's, she can't, I mean, she can't get up off this couch. Uh, my mom has gotten up. She's gotten a stack of books, and she's spending all of this time reading to my son. And my son is the kind of guy where he's like, another one, another one, another one, another one. Like, he could read 40 books, all right? Okay, Alexis, Hannah, you guys, yeah, you guys would get along. So, so 
My mom is just making sure that he's taken care of. My mom is not sitting there feeling sorry for herself. She's not, she's not sitting saying, woe is me. She's not saying, I need you guys to serve me. She's gone out of, our, her, out of her way to serve us. And so my life is littered with stories like this with my mom. My favorite one is when she told off a biker, but that's for another day, okay? She's been in the hospitals for a long, long time. Some of you guys can relate to that. She's missed major holidays. Some of y'all can relate to that. Uh, she's been in bed for days. Uh, but that woman is someone that I strive to be like every single day. When I moved out to Colorado, uh, we lived with my parents for a little bit. And I didn't know this existed, but I was snooping around their house once. Okay, um, I go into my mom's room. She's got a little office. And I turn the corner, and I, and I see her closet. And my mom's got this closet full of sewing supplies, all right? Um, but when you look in a little bit closer, what you see is this one oversized pillow in the closet. And then all over the wall, you see posters and printer paper just covered in handwritten cursive with Bible verses just written all over the walls. And that woman wakes up early in the morning. She goes into her prayer closet. She listens to the Spirit. She spends time in the Word, and she prays those things for the people that mean something to her. She prays for the people that she loves. She does not spend her time waking up, watching TikTok in the morning. I would be concerned if she did. But she wakes up, and she thinks about other people, and she prays for other people. And for me, that's something I want to emulate in my life. And so tonight is we just talk about this. We just think about this, okay? I just want to leave you guys with this. Just have this rattling in your brain as you go through the week. Hey, authentic love is sincere, okay? Sincere just means I mean what I say, and my actions back it up, right? When I say I love you, not only do my words mean it, but my actions back it up, right? Authentic love is devoted. Hey, I told you I'm here for you, so I'm actually going to follow through on it, right? Authentic love puts others ahead of ourselves, hey, I see that you need me right now, and it might not be a convenience for me. This might be super, super odd for me. This might be uncomfortable. But if you need me, I love you, so I will do it, right? So we have to, we think through these. And so authentic Christians, hey, we live and display things and these things in our life. And the question that we got to ask, the question that we got to leave you with is this, hey, how are we doing? How are we doing? And that's a question that, listen, I got to wrestle with that. You got to wrestle with that. All right, but Jesus has called us to do those things. Jesus has called us to be those people to other people. Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you remember the people that live out those traits? Like, are there people in your life where you're like, yeah, that person stands out above the rest because they do those things, right? Chances are the answer is yes, okay? So the question is, hey, how do I become that? And I'm going to leave you with that, all right? I'm going to pray. Um, middle school, we got about 15 minutes. Okay, high school, we're going to roll into late night. Um, hey, seriously, y'all, adults, small group leaders, they're here for you. Okay, y'all, I'm here for you. If you ever need anything, call, text, whatever you got to do. Okay, same with these guys, these men and women that volunteer their time. Hey, we are here for you guys. All right, uh, let me pray for us and then we'll break. Father God, thank you for today. Um, Father, I pray as we, uh, we just think through what it looks like to be an authentic Christian, Father. I just uh, I pray that we would, man, we would see the people who are doing it well right now, that we would be able to identify people in our life that are doing it well. Father, that we would be able to emulate that. Father, that we would be inspired by it, that we would be encouraged by it, and even pushed by it. Father, I, I know so many of these high schoolers and and middle schoolers in the room, and I know the impact that they've got on people. And, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to do that, Father, and that uh, these kids would be influencers in their high school, that they would be influencers in their middle school. Uh, Father, that they would point people to Jesus in the way that they love others. Lord, we love you. Pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.